Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Wisconsin Brewing Park for today's edition of Boys WIA Boys Baseball here live on Zaluski Sports. Elijah Vinks a lot of with you here doing play-by-play -play tonight here alongside Matt Peck producing. We got a, a matchup between two good teams here. First from the North Shore Conference playing their first game of the season. The Hartford Orioles coached by Steve Oleshko. The Orioles starting lineups today leading off. R.J. Tomei, number 30, the center fielder. Ethan Burkhold, number 7, playing first base. Carter Cuts, number 21, playing shortstop. Joe Landgraf, number 22, playing second base. Brandon Pohl, number 15, playing catcher. Caden Romans, number three, playing left field. Connor Ford, number 14, the DH. And the eighth hole, Brady Lawson, number two, who's uh, playing right field. And Aiden Culp to round it out, number four, playing. Oh, man, I'm, this is my first. Third base, that's what it is. I had, I had to memorize the numbers a little bit here because they give the positions by numbers, but that's how you're supposed to do it. So so that's the starting lines for Hartford. And on the mound for the Hartford Orioles is Braden Berg, number 11 pitcher. And uh, now the starting lineups for the Kettle Marine Lasers, who are 2-1 and one already on the season. Uh, leading off for the Kettle Marine Lasers is J.J. Wilbur, number two, shortstop. Number, number 44, Number 44, Jer Jimmy Angle, sophomore outfielder, playing left today. Brian Burns, number 10, not Brian Burns, Reed Burns, number 10, playing first base. Number 6, Scott Brown, who is DHing today, playing cleanup. Number 1, La Lason Fabishak, playing shortstop. Number number four, Lincoln Asher playing catcher. Number three, Jonah Roloff playing center field. Number 23, Emmett Ke Kelchin Jr. who's playing right today and to round it out for the hitting today for James Wolbert's team. Number 16, Sam Scafido playing Second base today, and the pitcher on the mound today for the Kettle Moraine Lasers is number two, Andrew Ishag, who's a junior on the year. Uh, Kettle Moraine coming into this game 2-1, and one, like I said, in this season. They've played a couple games this year in Tennessee and Illinois, is it, they played? They played two games there already this season and won two out of three where they played. And I'm sure this year Kettle Moraine looking to do some more damage here. They've had some really great wins last season, and... Coached by James Wolbert, they've had a really nice season. So with that, we're going to take a quick game break, and uh, we'll come right back with you with some more after the boys baseball and Zaleski sports.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here for Kettle Moraine versus Hartford tonight here. We've got a really great one tonight here for you guys, getting ready to do the national anthem. But this is going to be our second game on Zalewski Sports here after a couple of wild days of delays and snowstorms up north. And down here we've had a couple of rainstorms as, as this game was supposed to be played last night at 7. But thankfully they had this place reserved tonight and uh, put us a spot here to call the game at 7 p.m. tonight. Clear skies tonight is the the weather, and it's actually not too cold outside as well, but it's definitely hoodie weather as the starting lineups here for the Hartford Oils, coached by Steve Oleshko. Center fielder, R.J. Tome, number 30. First baseman, Ethan Burkell, number 7. Shortstop, Carter Kutz, number 21. Cuts. Second base, number 22, Joe Landgraf. Catcher, number 15, Brandon Pohl. Batting sixth, Caden Romans, the left fielder, number three. DHing for the Orioles is Connor Ford, number 14. In the eighth spot, Brady Laus Loudon, who is the right fielder tonight. And Aiden Culp to round it out third base, batting ninth, number four. And the pitcher on the mound for the Hartford Orioles is Braden Berg, number 11. The starting lineups for the Kettle Marine Lasers, coached by James Wolbert. Leading off for the Lasers is coach's son, J.J. Wolbert, third baseman, number two. Batting second, the left fielder, number 44, Jamie Angle. Batting third, number 10, Reed Burns, who is the first baseman. DHing for the Kettle Moraine Lasers is number six, Scott Brown, who is batting cleanup. And in the fifth spot is uh, number one, Layton F Layson Fa Fabishak, number four, the sixth hitter, Lincoln Asher, in the seventh spot, number three, Jonah Roloff, who is the center fielder, and right fielder at number eight, Sam Scafido, and, or, excuse me, number, the batting eighth is number 23, Emmett Kelchin, who is playing right field, and uh, the rounded out is Sam Scafido in the ninth spot, number 16 at second base. Pitching for the Kettle Marine Lasers is Jimmy Angle, or not Jimmy Angle, Number 22, Andrew Ishag, who is pitching today here, who is a junior. And uh, right about now, we're going to get you guys ready here for the National Anthem. We're going to step aside at, for the National Anthem right now. Second at first base, number seven, Ethan Burkle. At third base, number 21, Carter Coots. Batting fourth, Joe Landgraf. Doing the catching work for the Orioles, number 15, Brandon Cole. In left field, number three, Kaden Romas. Designated inning for the Orioles, number 14, Connor Ford. In right field, number two, Brady Laystone. Batting ninth, Shortstop, Aiden Tomolo. And pitching, Grayson Bird. And now the starting lineup for the Kettlewell Lasers. Batting leadoff, number two, J.J. Wolver. In left field, number 44, Jimmy Angle. Batting third, number 10, first baseman, Reed Burns. Doing the hitting work for the Lasers. Batting fourth, number six, Scott Brown. Batting fifth, third baseman, number one, Lason Fabishak. Catching for the Lasers, number four, Lincoln Asher. In center field, number three, Jonah Roloff. In right field, number 23, Emmett Kelchin. Batting ninth at second base, number 16, Sam Scafido. And pitching for the Lasers tonight, Number 22, Andrew Ishak. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to please rise if able to, remove your caps, and place your hands over your hearts for the playing of our national anthem.
Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here in Oconomowoc here for some boys baseball here on Zalesi Sports. Elijah Banks a lot of with you here today per, play, doing play-by-play. -play. Matt Peck producing, switching roles here like we always do here in Milwaukee. And it should be a fun night tonight here between the Hartford Orioles who are 0-0 zero zero on the season to start and the Kettle Moraine Lasers who are 2-1 on the start here. Kettle Moraine comes in this game, 2-1 coming out playing a tournament in Tennessee, playing two teams, I believe, from Tennessee and then one from Deerfield, Illinois, I believe it was. And that one should be a fun – that was a fun weekend for them. I believe it, they went during their spring break, and they got a little bit of runs in here before Hartford did, as Hartford hasn't got a game in yet here. So Kendall Moran's got a little bit of an advantage coming into this one here. So the starting lineups, once again, the Hartford Orioles are coached by Steve Oleshko. Playing center field, leading off RJ Tomei, number 30. The first baseman, Ethan Burkle, number 7 in the second spot. Carter Cutts, number 21, shortstop, batting third, batting cleanup, Joe Landgraf, the second baseman, number 22. Brandon Pohl, batting fifth, who is the catcher. Batting sixth is the left fielder, Caden Romans, number 3. Batting seventh is the designated hitter, counter forward, number 14. Batting eighth, Brady Lawson, number 2, right fielder, and batting Ninth is third baseman Aiden Culp, number four. On the mound for the Kettle Moraine Lasers, coached by J J James Wolbert, is Andrew Ishag, number 22 on the mound here. And here we go. As Matt Peck said after the national anthem, play ball. First pitch is underway, and it is taken outside for a ball. 1 0 is the count to start. At the plate, once again, for the Orioles is R.J. Thomas, who is the center fielder, as he follows one off to the left side off of his leg, it looked like. Beautiful conditions here tonight at Wisconsin Brewing Company Park in Oconomowoc. Clear skies tonight as we were supposed to play ball here last night from Oconomowoc. But we couldn't get it through because there was a little bit of rain here in southern Wisconsin, but up north for our guys on Zaleski, up north, they, they got a lot of snow. 1-1 one, one count. Oh, he follows that one off again to the back screen. And now it's a 1-2 count on Tome. A 1-2. 
Fouls it off again. That's the third straight foul ball in a row here. Hartford, their first game of the year, they got to get used to some things here. As um, they made it to the state tournament last year in, I believe it was Division One, right? Division One and you know, great, one, great runs from Steve Oleshko's team last year, hoping to do the same this year and get right back to the state tournament. As the ball's grounded to the third baseman, heading it over to first and jumping, and is he out still? What a play to pick it at first base for Reed Burns, a first baseman. A little bit of an off throw right there from the third baseman on Kettle Moraine, J.J. Wolbert, but way to recover that time. All right. So it's one out now in the top of the first. And coming up to bat now is number seven, the first baseman for Hartford, Ethan Burkle. Lefty on lefty matchup. Ball high upstairs for ball one. 1-0 -oh count to Burkle. And the next pitch is a little high again, and that's going to be 2-0 on Ethan Burkle, the first baseman for the Orioles. A pitch. They're going to call this one a little delayed strike call right there, but he got that one right inside that time as he locates that one. Uh, one, two, one, a little bit outside on the right side. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that just caught the corner. It's two, two count now as the ump being a little bit of some of the delayed calls here early in the back. Well, he steps off the mound here, taking his time right there. The two, two count with one out for. Burkle. He's taking he's really taking his time here. This is when you wonder would we need a pitch clock here in the WIA baseball too? Yeah. He might have already got over the limit as that one hits him off of his knee that time and Ethan Burkle takes it like a champ and runs over to first. We got our first base runner of the night for Hartford. Carter Coots now comes up to the plate, number 21, the shortstop for the Orioles. As a ready quick mound visit here, the catcher on Kettle Moraine. Lincoln Asher talking to his pitcher on the mound, Ishag ready, talking to him, like, hey, let's get that ball right back in, probably. Get, get that command back a little bit. Righty, lefty on righty matchup here. The first pitch is downstairs for or a ball. It's like, it's like all these umpires have the different signals for when they call strikes. The second pitch is hit on the line, drive to left field. It bounces down to the left fielder. Let's see if they send him the second baseman. He's going to hold, and there's going to be base runners on first and second for Hartford. One out down. And after the first ground out here, Hartford looks like they've got their hits in control here early, putting the ball in play for all three hitters so far. So we got guys on first and second with one out now. One guy in scoring possession at, position at second. Putting the pitcher, Andrew Ishag, in a little bit of trouble, trouble here early. Now batting is Joe Landgraf, who is the second baseman for the Orioles. Trying to put the Orioles up on top first as that ball goes off the first pitch. Lined out, almost gets the guy at second base. And it's going to be two outs now here. Good thing Hartford was aware of that one. Otherwise, they could have possibly turned a potential double play off of that line drive out right there to the first baseman. Good play that time by the first baseman, number 10, Reed Burns, who's made a couple of big plays right here. You got that big first out here by after that weird throw from third to first. Interesting throw, I should say. So two outs now as a ball's taken for a strike on the inside. 0-1 to the second baseman, Joe Landgraf.
The second pitch is high. 1-1 one, one is the count to Joe Landgraf. We've got a great, good amount of people here coming out for the game tonight here. Not too bad weather. Both sides not too far away from here. Obviously, last weekend we had Merrill and Pewaukee on. Pewaukee had about a 40-minute drive. Merrill had about a three-hour and a half-hour drive. You're looking at about like 10, 15-minute drive, not even for Kettle Rain tonight. And I don't know how much for Hartford. They're not too far around the Slinger area as that ball is followed off. One-two count to Landgraf now as the pitcher, Andrew Ishag, looking to get out of this inning. With guys on first and second after back-to-back -back base hits, or a hit by pitch and then a base hit. So we'll do the one-two again. And that's one's taking a little outside on the right side. Ball two. Sixteen pitches so far for Ishag. You want to get that pitch count too high before you have to pull him. And his command, other than the hit by pitch, doesn't look too bad so far here early. Oh, one two again, two two again is followed back to the back screen at behind home plate. And we'll do this one right again, right over again. Looks like Landgraf and the Orioles trying to work the pitch count a little bit for Ishag. Here comes the pitch. High upstairs, everybody holds. And it's going to be a full count now. Full count, two outs. Guys on first and second. This is a big pitch right here for Hartford and Kettle Moraine. Expect them to get something possibly off speed out of the zone right here, possibly to get them looking, swinging possibly at something that looks good. But I'm sure Landgraf's going to be ready for this one. Here we go. Hit up, and that's coming right over us. <laughs> that foul ball, you might have even seen that on the camera possibly. Hit over the back screen that time, and we'll, we will do the 3-2 over again with two outs here in the top of the first. Beautiful night here from Oconomowoc at Wisconsin Brewing Company Park. It's fish fry night today too, so they got a restaurant in here, and that's, I, I walked past it to go to the bathroom there. It's packed for a fish fry day. Here goes the 3-2 count again with two outs. Ishag looking to get out of a little bit of jam here. And that one's down low. Bases are loaded. Way to go for Joe Landgraf to keep stay alive in the count and load the bases up here. And Ishag is still in even more trouble now here with 21 pitches. Bases loaded. A double could, bases could clear the bases and put Hartford up 3-0 early. And the guy to try to do that right now is the catcher for Hartford. Caden Romans. Looks like the umpire is looking to talk, discuss a little bit of something right here real quick. Make sure everyone's on the right page. Here we go. Ishag delivers and pitches a little outside on the right side. 1-0 count for Caden Romans. The 1-0 count, pitch inside for a strike. It's a little high. But 1-1 one -one is the count on Romans. Shag with 22 pitches now, delivers one downstairs, almost at the ground, and it's 2-1 now on Caden Romans. Ishag's got to be a little careful right here as he's got the base loaded, two outs, but he should be grateful he's got two outs right here as the grounder could potentially end this inning unless an error could happen. So he's got to be a little careful here if he works his count up here and walks potentially walks a run in here, or as you might see a mound visit from Coach Wolberg. Pitches, hits the right corner for a strike. And we're at two balls and two strikes now here. A very important pitch coming up here with two outs. Bases loaded. Hartford looking to do damage and strike first in their first game of the season. Season opener, if you will. Opening day for those guys. Opening day for Kettle Moraine 
in Wisconsin as that ball's fouled off. He just got a just got the bat on that one, and we're gonna do it over again. So Ishag up to 26 pitches now. Hartford's done a really good job to work in this inning by just following a lot of pitches off, keeping the count alive. Has a 2-2 again, grounder to the third baseman. Wilbur trying to make a play and make the easiest one, steps on third, and Kettle Moran gets out of it. So we stay 0-0, zero zero, and Kettle Moran gets out of the jam to start the first. You're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. Don't read Thomas Moore's ad. <laughs> Good day. My name is Ken Hyman, and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin, as a matter of fact. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Fetacaseri, Cafletiri, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edom, Gouda, and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Field here, park at in Oconomowoc, ladies and gentlemen, from WIA Baseball here on Zaleski Sports here. Beautiful night for baseball here. Our second game in the Milwaukee area between the Hartford Orioles and the Kettle Moran Lasers. Liza Vanks Salada back with you here alongside Matt Peck producing. Kettle Moran gets out of a big jam here. Andrew Ishag throws 26 pitches and um, gets out of the bases loaded jam. So we stay 0-0 zero zero here but heading in the bottom of the first. Today's game is sponsored by Fleet Farm. Pick up all your pets' favorites from Fleet Farm. Find everything from food and treats to toys and health products under one roof from all the brands you trust. Dogs or cats, they've got you covered. Shop your pets everyday essentials at Fleet Farm. So we're coming back to this game here. We're going to give you guys Kettle Moran's starting lineups now for the batting. So leading off for the Lasers is number two third baseman, J.J. Wolbert. The left fielder, number 44, Jimmy Angle. The first baseman, number 10, for... Reed Burns, designated hitter number six, Brown. Number one, Fabisak. Asher, number four. Roloff, number three. Kelchin, number 23, batting eighth. And Scafido, number 16, batting ninth, who is a second baseman. So, J.J. Wolbert will take a step in the box now as the first pitch is in for a strike. On the mound for the Hartford Orioles is Braden Berg, number 11. Pitches a little high outside for a ball. 1-1 one, one is the count. Let's see if Kel Moran does the same to work the count of Braden Berg, just as he did with Ishag. Ishag got up to 27 pitches in the first inning. We'll see how Coach James Wolberg uses them the rest of the game. As the second pitch that time is upstairs for a ball. 2-1-1 one, one is the count. Comes a pitch. Foul all popped up. Should be playable for the shortstop, and he grabs it. That time, it was shortstop. Carter cuts to make the play in the infield for an easy first out of the game for that. the Hartford Orioles. So batting second for the Kettlebrand Lasers is number 44, Jimmy Angle, sophomore, who is playing left field tonight for the Lasers. That ball's taking a little high here, a little off speed to start it. 1-0 is the count to Burt Angle. And 1-0 taking a little outside again. 2-0 is the count now. As the pitcher that time 
for Bradenburg looking for something as the ball is hit to the right side. Foul out of play into the seats. As what I was trying to say is Bradenburg trying to get trying to get angle looking a little bit here to start the game. Or swinging. Two balls and one strike to Jimmy Angle. These Kettlebrand Lasers already have some playing time here as they've gotten three games under their belt out of state playing in Tennessee as hopefully that helps them here in the long run here to try to get some state run to the state tournament again as they haven't made it in a couple of years. What are they ranked by P what, what's it, what is uh Kettle Rain's ranked by PBR second in the state and Hartford Hartford is not ranked this season. So Kettle Rain's got a high expectations this year right behind the number 1 Oak Creek as that ball's taken outside three balls and two strikes now on Jimmy Angle. Here comes a full count now. Hits this one, a ground ball to the first baseman, gets past him, and it's going to be a base hit for Jimmy Angle as number 11. As a first baseman that time, couldn't make the play. That was Ethan Burkill that tried to make the diving stop, but instead it's a base knock for the sophomore Jimmy Angle as now Burns comes up to the plate now, the shorts, the first baseman for Kettle Moraine. Reed Burns now at the plate, the first baseman. Takes a ball, a ball low to start the count. Got him running with the high expectations here last year. I don't believe that they don't have Oak Creek on the schedule this year, but boy, that would have been a matchup if those two could have met up in the Milwaukee area this season. You know, that just shows how good you are when you play a tournament out of state as that ball's taken inside, just hits the corner for a strike. 1-1 one, one is the count now with one out. But uh, going back to it, there's so much depth in the Milwaukee area with baseball. You got teams in the Classic 8, like Arrowhead. Even Oconomowoc, we saw earlier, beat Watertown as a pickoff attempt. Oh, almost got him right there as Burke tried to throw it back to his first baseman, Burkle. We're going to do the 1-1 one, one over again as he swings at the one hard and it's going to be 1-2 now. Good job on the off speed right there for Berg getting him to chase. Looks like curveball right there. Oh, he tries to pick him off again. Does he get him? Nope. Oh, I think, I don't think it's like the rule they have in the MLB where you get only a certain amount of pickoffs, but... That's the second time he's picked them off already as the ball hits the ground. The runner not, does not go. 2-2 two, two count again with one out for Kettle Moraine. Reed Burns takes this pitch down inside again, outside again. Full count now as we've seen a lot of that early here. We didn't surprise them. We haven't seen that a lot. Last Saturday's game between Pewaukee and Merrill where we've had a lot of full counts but today it seems like it's we're only in the first inning and we already had three to four full counts. Here we go. Full count. Swing and a miss. First strike out of the day for Braden Berg and it's two outs now. Scott Brown coming to the plate now. The designated hitter for the Catamaran Lasers trying to advance his runner at first. And left fielder Jimmy Angle. As he tries to pick him off again, doesn't get him again. Ah, looks like Braden Berg really trying to sees that Jimmy Angle is a, a guy that's not afraid to steal the base when he can. As that's the third time he's tried to pick him off already. As this pitch has popped up right to us again in the stands. 0-1 is the count. Both teams with a hit of their own. Hartford's done the most damage so far here in the first inning. 
0-1 count. Goes outside low for ball one. Seventeen pitches on the pitch count for Braden Berg. Here comes the next pitch. This ball's hit to the right field in the gap. That was gonna get past. That might one might score a run. Runner goes a third. He's looking to go home. The third base coach is gonna send him. He's gonna go to the plate. One run's gonna score, and the lasers strike first with an RBI double from. The designated hitter number six, Scott Brown, delivering for the Lasers. As that ball was just hit right, a straight drive to the right center for that double. And the Lasers, you know, that's something that you got to watch out for today here. This is their third, fourth game on the season now, Hartford. This is their opening day for them. That ball's hit in the dirt here a couple times already here. Bradenburg starting to lose his control a little bit early with a couple balls in the dirt. one owes the count to number one, Fabersack. That ball's hit right at the back screen. One ball, one strike now on Fabishak. Two balls, one strike. Forgot one hit the dirt, and he gets some swing on this one. Two, two is the count. Bradenberg looking to get out of this one here. Can't give him anything hanging because he might turn on one right here. Never know what this Kettle Moraine team, the power they have as he swings right through it. Another one of those off-speed pitches. It's one nothing at the end of the first. Two strikeouts for Hartford and Braden Berg. one nothing Kettle Moraine leads. You're watching Boys Baseball on Zaleski Sports. Big Putts is the greatest indoor mini golf experience in the universe as determined by unofficial independent voting. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield is open seven days a week. Plan your next night out, weekend, birthday party, company outing, or an afternoon delight of mini golf at Big Putts. After a round of golf, test your skill in the area's best arcade. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield and Big Putts on Facebook. I like Big Putts and I cannot lie. Asher Lasting Exteriors is committed to craftsmanship, innovation, and outstanding customer service as Western Wisconsin's trusted gutter and gutter helmet experts. Our highly trained certified technicians can install gutter helmet onto new or existing gutters. Gutter helmet blends in beautifully with your home, can withstand the heaviest of rainfalls, and is backed by a lifetime transferable warranty. Save up to 20% with zero down and no interest or payments for up to 18 months with seamless gutters and gutter helmet. Brought to you by Asher Lasting Exteriors. Welcome back from Wisconsin Brewing Company Park in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. As it's one to nothing, Kenham Rain on Hartford here. Boys, WIA Boys Baseball on Zaleski Sports. Elijah Vangsalata back with you here as Kenham Rain strikes first off of a double from the designated hitter, Scott Brown, in the first inning. One that hit a line drive to the right field, right center gap. Put the lasers up on top first, but coming back on the mound for the lasers. And wait a little bit on Game Changer here. I believe it's still going to be it's still going to be Ishag as that pitch is outside for ball one to start it at the plate for the Hartford Orioles is number 14 Connor Ford the designated hitter the 1-0 count takes a strike right inside 1-1 one, one. This pitch is grounded to the second baseman. He's trying to make a play over to first. And it's a ground out, the first out of the inning. As is uh, from the second base to the first baseman for the first out of the inning. Pretty easy play here as the first baseman has been busy so far today here for the Kendall Marine Lasers, Reed Burns. Obviously the first baseman is used a lot in baseball. And he's been busy here. Two big plays already here. One, one diving play to scoop one up. 
And the other one, just to get him as a swing and a miss, a big power swing right there in the box that time is... I don't know who that is at the plate now. That ball's taken outside, inside for a strike. Or outside for a ball. Excuse me. Two to one is the count now. As this one's popped up high in the air. Who's going to make the play? I think Burns is calling for it, and he dives and catches it. So two outs now for the Orioles, or Kettle Moraine. Getting two outs already. All right, this one's better. I can see both teams' names. So Kolb is at the plate now for the Hartford Orioles as he takes a ball upstairs to start it Hartford batting through the order here this is the ninth hitter We've only got one hit on the day here no guys on base right now as in the first inning they had a really busy one a couple got a guy hit by pitch got a base hit had the bases loaded at one point as a guy walked as this ball's fall back Kettle Moran got a grounder to get out of the jam as they only need one out but we're in the top of the second here now two outs one ball one strike with Kolb at the plate. Aiden Kolb, who is the second, third baseman for the Orioles. That pitch is downstairs again. 2 1 is the count now on Kolb. Ishag doing a really good job of sitting here. Only 11 pitches so far. Looking to have a shorter inning after that 26 pitch first. Here we go. This one's grounded here. Who's going to make the play at third baseman? Wolbert trying to make it to first and gets this one down. And Ketamarain gets out of this one as well. Three up, three down as we head to the middle of the second. You're watching Boys Baseball on Zaleski Sports. Zero to zero is the score. Fleet Farm has everything you need for every season of life. From tending the vegetable garden season to planting 100 acres of crop season. Fleet Farm is your one-stop shop. Whether it's strawberry jam season, cook your walleye season, or his first set of wheels season, Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park in Oconomowoc, home of the Lake Country Dock Hounds. Elijah Banks, a lot of with you here on Zaleski Sports for baseball, WIA baseball here between the Hartford Orioles and the Kettlebury Lasers, who are up 1-0 here, heading into the bottom of the second. Some pretty good pitching on both ends so far here. Kettle Moraine and Ishag doing a really good job here to start as the ball is thrown a second here as they get ready to start the bottom of the second. But Braden Berg... Only one really big hit that they really, he really gave up here. First hit was a single that it was a hard play to make for that first baseman that time to make, but it got through. And then a line drive right center hit for a double for Scott Brown that put the lasers on the board first 1-0. Like I said, again, the lasers are coming in already 2-1, and one, and Hartford, this is their season opener. No better team to play it against here. A really great game not here for a team from the North Shore and a team from the Classic 8. As the first pitch is taken in for a strike. At the plate for the Kettle Moran Lasers right now is Asher. Who is playing catcher today. 0-1 count, 
oh, two count to Asher. Swings at this one. That's about the third foul ball that came almost right to the our our booth up here, I should say. Or right above our booth here. They hit it really high. I'm just getting scared that one of these balls, we have the window open right now, one of these balls is going to come at us and hit me right in the face. But <laughs> that one, that one wasn't too close as that ball's taken high and upstairs. One, two is the count now to Asher, the catcher. Braden Berg up to 27 pitches now, or 28 now after that pitch. As a one, two again. Swings and this one's grounded to the third baseman trying to make a play. Throw to first is in time. One out in the inning. A lot of grounders today being hit here. That's why they go through them in warmups. You're going to see a lot of those in the game. As now batting for the Kettle Moraine Lasers is center fielder number three, Jonah Roloff. Rolf. Well, for a big hack at that first pitch. He wanted that one, and he liked that pitch right away. A big fastball right there. Gets right by him. Berg is already full with a couple of guys in that first with two strikeouts. Off of the off speed, that ball's hit to the left field high and deep. And it's going to be caught by the left fielder on Hartford. That time catching it was the left fielder. Caden Roman's making the play. That was a high drive right there. But two outs down here in the inning. Hartford... Possibly could get out of this one right now as number 23, Emmett Kelchin, comes to the plate, the right fielder. Berg looking for a short inning right now as he takes a pause. So I'm going to give you guys one of our sponsors right now. Tonight's game sponsored by Griffin. Right now at Griffin Forward Walker Shots, the ultimate New Year special. Griffin will inspect and rotate tires, check battery, complete multi-point inspection, check your heat, Change your wiper blades and air filter all for $179.95. That's Griffin Ford of Waukesha. As Berg, I think, they don't, they don't use, I might sound stupid for this, but they don't use pitch comm devices, right? <laughs> this, is, this is just high school baseball. But it looked like he had something wrong with his communication system or something or something with his, something with his uniform, I think it was. As we're taking a little pause here. One of our sponsors tonight here, Big Putts, looking for a great family entertainment. Look to Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield. Full indoor 18-hole mini golf course, arcade games, and more. Also look to Big Putts for your next birthday party and family gathering. Call Big Putts at 414-373-0505 to book your event now and visit Big Putts on Facebook. I like Big Putts and I cannot lie. As that ball is a big hex and swing that time for Kelchin. To start the count, 0-1. Looking to go faster as that ball's taken outside on the right side. 1-1 is the count now. Or right. 0-2 is the count now. Like I said, this ump is giving a little bit of late call, later calls here. You're not calling strike right away as this one's fouled off outside of the stadium and into the apartments outside of the stadium. So it's an 0-2 count to Owen Emmett Kelchin, who is the eighth spot hitter, as Berg takes a step off the mound. Kelchin, did he swing on that one? Oh, he did, yeah, he did. Strikeout, and he's, he's going to get this one out. And it's a strikeout to get out of the inning. Three up and three down for the Hartford Orioles. Great job by Braden Berg. 1-0 is the score. Kettle Moran leads. You're watching... At the end of two, you're watching Boys Baseball on Zalski Sports. For the best price on the Bowtie brand, all roads lead to Griffin Chevrolet in the Auto Mall. Lease this 24 Chevrolet Trex for $255 a month or 36 months. Or when you lease this 24 Chevrolet Silverado, pay just $348 for 36 months. Find new roads, discover old friends. There's no better way than with a Griffin Chevrolet. As a proud sponsor of Zaleski Sports, Stevens Point Brewery brings you a variety of gourmet sodas to indulge in while watching your favorite teams. Flavors include black cherry cream, kitty cocktail, mango, orange cream, vanilla cream, and root beer in regular or zero sugar. Have it as a float for the perfect post-game treat. Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here 
home of the Wisconsin dot coms or Oconomowoc dot coms, Lake Country dot coms. I'm not that big in this, but the Lake Country dot coms, the same division as the Milwaukee Milkmen playing here in the their baseball league here affiliated with the Milwaukee Brewers. As it's one to nothing, Kettle Moran leads over Hartford. It's Friday night, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a great boy, boys baseball. I don't know why I say boys baseball because there's no girls so baseball. <laughs> it's called softball. I guess I could say baseball here. But it's 1-0. Kettle Moran leads. Kettle Moran ranks second by PBR in the state right behind Oak Creek number one. Kettle Moran look to make up some noise here and get back to the state tournament this year. Coached by James Wolbert. On the mound still is Andrew Ishag, who has done a pretty good job on the mound so far for the Lasers. That ball's taken high and upstairs for ball one. Start the inning. Ishag up to 39 pitches now. He's slowed down his count after that first inning. As this ball is down low again. Two balls, no strikes for Tome at the plate for the Hartford Orioles. 2-0 count. He hits this one to shallow center. Pat falls out and the catch is made by the center fielder. That time that's Roloff that makes the play on Kettle Moraine for the first out of the inning. Wind blowing a little bit here tonight, so that one was kind of drifting a little bit, but we did a good job to keep the effort going that time for the center fielder Roloff that time. Jonah Roloff. So now at the plate is number seven, Ethan Burkell here as uh, the Hartford Orioles are back up at the top of the order again. Burkell was hit by a pitch in his first at-bat. I believe he was. As the second pitch is swinging in a miss. Yeah. 0-2 on Burkell. Andrew Ishak doing a really good job now for that first inning. Really just not giving Hartford what they want hitting tonight so far. As that ball's taken in, first strike three. You see that? Did you see that umpire? He he ran all the way out and did a strike call. That's some pretty cool strike. That's what he probably said. Off to the side here. A little entertaining from the ump here for the second out of the inning. As Ishag now with strikeout number one on the night. As that ball's taken outside for ball one, two. The shortstop, Carter Cuts. The 1 0 to Cuts with two outs. Ishag looking to get out of third now. Down low for ball two. 2 0 is the count. Andrew Ishag up to 46 pitches now on the night. Only allowed one hit. One walk and one hit by pitch so far. Pretty good outing so far for him. As this one's taken inside, this hits the top corner for strike one. Harper's got to get a little back into some damage here. Probably putting in the ball play would be the best option. But when this guy gets hot, it's throwing strikes and striking people out. He's he's in his, he's dialed in. As this one's hit fouled to left field side into the the grass outside of the stadium. Two balls and two strikes to the shortstop cuts. Pretty interesting thing about Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here in Oconomowoc. It's right by I-94, the freeway here on the outside. So if you hit a home run so far like your MLB range, that might even go out and hit a car out in the highway. This one's taken... Outside for ball three now. And ball three. Three balls and two strikes, two outs. Nobody on base for the Hartford Orioles. Hartford looking to do some damage here. Haven't really got too much going here since that first inning. A 3-2 to cuts. Fouls that one off here out of the glove. That could have been an out if you, the catcher would have held on to that one. So we will do the 3-2 again. 
here in the top of the third. Here's the pitch from Ishag. That one bounces down low to the ground. And catcher Asher is looking for it, and it's going to be a walk. How about a six-pitch walk right there if the Carter cuts, and he gets on base here for the first time, first base runner since the first inning for the Hartford Orioles. As Ishag, you know, be a little careful here. He's working up that pitch count again now as he's up to 51 pitches now on the night here in the third inning. Trying to get out of this one again. Good thing for pitchers to work up the count, though, see what the hitter wants. And Cut's doing a really good job just being patient with it and, st and staying back. So I got it first, two outs in the top of the third. The first pitch fouled off that time as Joe Landgraf is up at the plate now for a second at bat. In his first at bat, he grounded out. All for one on the day here. And you got one one strikeout only in the day so far for Andrew Ishag. That's all one count. He tries to pick him off. He doesn't get him. First pickoff attempt of the day for Kettle Marin. As we've already seen that plentiful of times here for Hartford on the other end with Braden Berg. So the 0 one again to Landgraf. Outside. For ball one. And that's a little way outside that time on the right. 1-1 one, one is a count with two outs here in the top of the third for the Hartford Orioles. Not too far from here. One one count. Grounded up to the second baseman. He's gonna have some time to make a play and he gets it over to Reed for the f out, and he they get out of the jam here. So we're going to head to the middle of the third, bottom of the third here. one nothing is a score. Kettle Moran leads. You're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high-quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. Why work for Staub Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good and they, I believe, truly care about their employees. Staub has a a great benefits package. Staub is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Staub Construction. Apply now at StaubCO.com. Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here in Oconomowoc. one nothing is a score. Kettle Moran leads here on Hartford through Three and a half innings here gone by, by, led by a really good outing by the junior pitcher, Andrew Ishag, on Kettle Moraine. Three innings pitch, one hit given up, two walks, and one strikeout. A lot of grounders here in the game so far here, but the infield making a lot of great plays for the Kettle Moraine Lasers here in this first inning, or in the first three, as they lead one, nothing. This game sponsored by... Asher Exteriors. Today's game is brought to you by Asher Exteriors. Call Asher's for your free no obligation estimate at 888.goasher or visit goasher.com. That's goasher.com. Get off the ladder and get gutter helmet with last Asher Lessing Exteriors. Trust the experts on your most valuable asset, your home. Give them a call today at 888.goasher. As the first pitch is taken in for a ball high, as Scafido comes to the plate now as that ball's hit to the ground of third baseman, making the play at first easily for out and one. J.J. Wilbur back to the top of the order now for Kettle Moran up to the plate for the Lasers. Bradenburg doing a really great job in the mound so far here through two, two innings, two and one-thirds innings so far, only giving up two hits so far in the night. Just that big double from 
Scott Brown, the DH, was some big hit for the Lasers early. First pitch, big hack that time from Wolbert. The psych pitch is high upstairs for ball one. Not a big hitting game tonight here so far early. It is their opening day for Hartford, so they got to get used to this here. First game of the year, jitters. As the ball, second ball is taken up here for ball two. Two and one is the count. Ball one. Ball one. Thank you, Matt Peck. <laughs> Strike three is the call. As he strikes out looking. So that's going to be the... That's going to be his fourth strike out of the day here. Hartford doing a really good job getting strikeouts here on the day. I don't know why, but sometimes the scoreboard looks different to what Game Changer has. But it's a little behind, so that's why if you guys hear me saying the wrong balls and strikes, sometimes it's because of Game Changer being a little behind. Might as well look at the scoreboard as it's 0-1 on the count right now to the left fielder Jimmy Angle. As that ball's taken outside, ball 1. 1-1 one, one the count with two outs here in the bottom of the third. Berg only with 42 pitches on the night. He's doing a really great job on the mound. As this ball's hit to the second baseman, make, trying to make the play, gets that one easily. And a 1-2-3 inning for Braden Berg and the Hartford Road Orioles at the end of three. It's 1-0 Kettle Moraine. You're watching baseball on Zalexi Sports. Big Putts is the greatest indoor mini golf experience in the universe, as determined by unofficial independent voting. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield is open seven days a week. Plan your next night out, weekend, birthday party, company outing, or an afternoon delight of mini golf at Big Putts. After a round of golf, test your skill in the area's best arcade. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield and Big Putts on Facebook. I like Big Putts and I cannot lie. Customize your next apparel order with Meta Custom Apparel of Stevens Point. Visit us today for custom baseball and softball apparel. Need help with a design? We have you covered. Our highly skilled staff will turn your idea into a reality with great quality screen printing. Or choose from a variety of embroidery options today. Visit us at our physical store or online at metacustom.com. Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here. Top of the fourth inning here. This game's going a little fast here. 8-12 p.m. here. Kettle Moran leads 1-0 on Hartford. The number two team ranked by PBR is the Kettle Moran Lasers. Coming into this game 2-1, the Hartford Orioles. This is their home opener for their first game of the year. It's getting a little chillier out outside. It's 8-13 it's p.m. here, and it's still surreal to see the sky kind of lit up a little bit. That's how you know summer's still... Starting to come around the corner here as we're getting spring underway. 1-0. 1-0 is a score here. Kettle Moran leads. Not a lot of hitting going on so far here tonight. But a big pitching duel here for the Wisconsin home opener, I'll call it. As the first pitch is taking inside for a strike to number 15 at the plate for Hartford, that's pole at the line right now. He takes another strike on the inside corner. 0-2 oh, the count right away. Pole doesn't like what he's seeing at the plate. Already behind 0-2, oh, looking to make, make his way back in it as he takes a ball high upstairs for ball one. Pull the catcher for him, grounds it to the first base side. It's a fair ball. Good play that time by the first baseman, number 10, Reed Burns. He's made a lot of spectacular plays at first today here, and that's another one right there for out number one in the top of the fourth. Now the plate for the Hartford Orioles is Romans, the left fielder. Caden Romans takes the first pitch for a strike. I wasn't looking, so. Romans 0 for 1 on the day with pop out or ground out. 
I don't, I don't think I really need to say it. But 0 for 1 on the day is Paul. I mean, not Paul. Rome, Caden Romans. The ball's taken high upstairs for ball two. Two and one is the count with one out. Going by here in the top of the fourth. Andrew Ishag up to 60 pitches on the night. It looks like Ken Rain's starting to get some guy warmed up in the pen, just loosening up, loosening up a little bit. Now a big swing and a miss that time from Romans. And he's going to be down now. Two and two with the count on Caden Romans. Not a big strikeout day for Andrew Ishag, only with one, but the defense has been amazing today so far for Kettle Moraine on the infield and outfield. As that ball's taken for ball three just outside. And now it's up to a full count now. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Really? Oh. <laughs> So the full count with one out to Romans. The pitch, a ground to the third base. Wolbert making a good play over to Reed at first. Gets him out for out number two. My goodness. This infield for Kellum Rain doing a really good job so far today here. <laughs> Wait a minute. They got a different guy playing. Fabishak is playing out. It, third base, sorry, so sorry. He's playing third today here, actually. Fabishak's made some spectacular plays, whether it's Fabishak, Wolbert, Scafido, or Burns. They've all had their chance to make a really good play so far here, and that's the reason why Kenham Rains kept this game 1-0. With two outs here in the top of the fourth. 1-0 is the count. This ball's hit high and deep to right field. And it's going to be caught by Kelchin. They retire the side. 1-2-3 in the top of the fourth. Still 1-0 Kenna Moraine as we head to the bottom of the fourth. You're watching baseball on Zalewski Sports. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older. I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys, me. <laughs> hey Mike, I'm Sheila from security and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here for some WIA baseball here on Zaleski Sports. Elijah Banks a lot of with you tonight do, doing play-by-play -play alongside Matt Peck doing producing tonight. Second game in the Milwaukee area as we were supposed to play ball here last night at 7 p.m. But the rain and Mother Nature said otherwise. But, <laughs> but tonight it's clear skies but a little chilly. Make it 38 degrees on the night right now here. Live time. As Kenham Ryan heads to the plate now. In the bottom of the fourth, leading 1 0. That ball's taken high and upstairs for ball two. Braden Burke still doing a really great job on the mound tonight here for the Hartford Orioles as Burns is up to the plate now. Swing and a miss. I think he might have swung at ball three right there, but that was a good off-speed pitch right there from Berg down in the dirt to get him chase. So it's 2-1 to the count now on Reed Burns. That ball's taken high and upstairs for 3-1. 3-1 is the count. No outs here to start the four, bottom of the fourth here for Berg. 47, eight pitches on this pitch count as this one's taken right down the middle for strike two, and we're at a full count now. Now 
The full count to Burns is taken high and upstairs for a ball and a leadoff walk to start the inning for the Catamaran Lasers. Very good approach right there from Reed Burns, staying patient with it and drawing the walk. Leadoff walk here. I think this is the first time tonight, whether it's both teams, where we get a leadoff base runner. So a guy at first in the bottom of the fourth with no outs. Now at the plate for the Lasers is the designated hitter, Brown, as he hits this one deep to center. This time he doesn't get enough of it, just missed it. As it's out to the center fielder, Tomei. As Scott Brown tried to go one for two right there, he was the one that delivered the one and only run for Kettle Rain early as he flew that one out to center. It's now up to plate for the Lasers is shortstop Leighton Fab Fabishak with one out. This one's popped up in the air to the second baseman. Easy play that time for Joe Landgraf to make out number two. Well, two quick outs right there for the Lasers, for the Hartford Orioles after the leadoff walk. And Berg could get out of this jam with a snap of the fingers right now as now the catcher comes up to the plate now. For Kettle Moraine is number four, Lincoln Asher to the plate now. This ball's hit, fouled into the stands right now. 0-1 is the count with two outs and you're in the bottom of the fourth. As that ball's taken inside for strike one. One ball, one strike. As that ball's taken outside for strike two, actually. So the count is at one, two, with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Asher, the catcher at the plate for Kettle Moraine. Berg looking to get out of this one for four innings. He's had a couple strikeouts on the day so far, making the look at five right here as he takes a ball downstairs. Let's see how many strikeouts. Berg has, he's got four on the night here. It's only two hits, one earned run, one walk. You know, like I said earlier, that one hit from Brown was the only thing that really killed it as this one's hit to the right center gap again. This time, there's a guy on it as the runner goes a third from first. And we got runners on the corner, ladies and gentlemen, here. Third hit of the night here for Kettle Moran and a base hit for Asher, the catcher. Runners on the corners with two outs. Kettle Moran looking to do some more damage on Braden Berg now as... The catcher, Pole, will take a mound visit here and chat it up with him and calm him down a little bit here with two guys on base now. It looks like there's going to be a pinch runner at first base. It's going to be number 12, Chase Stody, with number three, Roloff, coming to the plate. Jonah Roloff, looking at the stats earlier. Well, for one in the day so far. As the stadium plays the Jeopardy music <laughs> with the mom visit here. I don't know if they're going to take a guy out right now or what. But if they do change pitchers, we'll take a break. Oh, no, it looks like they're just going to do a quick mound visit here as one of the pitching coaches comes out from Hartford. Kenna Moraine, like I said earlier, they're ranked number two in the state by PBR. Right behind the number one team in the state, Oak Creek. And Kettle Moraine in a couple weeks. This is a long homestand of theirs. We'll be playing St. Thomas More to end it at the Milkman Stadium, I believe, right? Against Thomas More in a couple weeks. As Berg tries to pick him off that time, he doesn't get him. He tries to pick him off again, he doesn't get him again. Like I said, in baseball, in high school baseball compared to the MLB, you don't get limited pickoffs. So Berg, any pitcher on the mound could give any pickoff attempts they want. As this ball's down in the dirt, nobody goes. Looked like possibly a guy on first was going to try to steal second after that ball in the dirt. Good job controlling it by pull behind the dish, though. As he tries to pick off him again, 
Tries to pick up Asher again. He doesn't get him. Make it the third time he's done that now. As the count stays 1-0 on Roloff. That pitch is taken outside again. Ball two. Two is a count. This one's fouled outside of the stadium right to the parking lot. Right at someone's car. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's a two one it's a two one count now. Three one. Two one? It's hard to read from that scoreboard. Two one count now with two outs. Oh, big swing on the dirt again. That's Berg's pitch today here. Getting a guy swinging on the dirt. As now we got a two two count here. Berg looking to get out of this big jam here like he did in the first. He's up to 60 pitches now. Still no one warmed up yet in that Hartford bullpen as he strikes him out. How about the fifth strikeout for Braden Berg and he keeps the score one to zero as we head into the fifth inning. You're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. Fleet Farm has everything you need for every season of life. From tending the vegetable garden season, to planting 100 acres of crop season. Fleet Farm is your one-stop shop. Whether it's strawberry jam season, cook your walleye season, or his first set of wheels season. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Milwaukee's best deal on Detroit Iron starts right here. 2324 Jeep Grand Cherokees with 10% off MSRP. Plus 24 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab 4x4 starting at 49499 with 5500 in rebates or 3.9% for 72 months. For cars and trucks imported from Detroit and deals made famous in Milwaukee, it doesn't get any better than this. Is there a Griffin hop tag on your car? I want to come back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wisconsin Brewing Park Company, Brewing Company Park here from the Lake Country Dotcom Stadium. There you go. I said it right this time. I'm one of the minor league teams here, one of the low minor league teams here in the same division as Milwaukee Milkman, the place where we were at last weekend at Franklin Field. But we're here in Oconomowoc here for some WIA baseball on Zaleski Sports. Lodge Vanks with you here tonight with Matt Peck producing. One nothing is a score here between Hartford, the team that went to state last year, and Kettle Moreno, who's ranked number two by PBR this season. As looks like there's going to be a new pitcher on the mound now for, huh? It says 18. It says 18, Sam Scafido. Hmm. We'll see what game changer says. <laughs> But we'll see what it says here. But the, the new pitcher is coming in here for the fifth. Good outing tonight here for the pitcher on Kettle Moraine Ishag. Four innings pitch, one hit, only giving up, only two walks and one strikeout. A lot of infield defense work for the for James Wolbert's team here early. I think it's safe to say this is one of their games where they haven't scored too much here. They beat Deerfield in Tennessee 14-0 one game, and they beat the other Tennessee team 10-5. And they also fell one of their games as well. Are they two and one going to two and one in a tournament out of state is pretty dang good. It just shows that you can play with the best of the best in the nation. The first pitch is outside. Up top. Yeah. If he catches that one, it's a strike, Matt Peck says. Yep. Lauston at the plate for Hartford. Sidearm pitch. Oh, it gets past him again. A little bit of control issues to start it here for the new pitcher. Uh, no name on there, but I'm just going to go with Sam Scafido on the roster. No, not Sam. Kanan Asher. No, I got it now. Kanan Asher. That's the brother of Lincoln Asher. So Kanan Asher on the mound now for Kettle Moraine as he finally gets that command back and throws his first strike of the night. 2-1 is a count with no outs. Here in the top of the fifth. Comes that pitch. Fouled outside right behind us again. 2-2 two -two is the count now. Something to notice about Kay Nasher. He looks like he leaves a sidearm pitcher. 
you know, it's you don't see too many sidearms, but you'll you'll get a couple of those in these leagues, especially MLB as well. Tyler Rogers on the Giants as he strikes him out that time on the off speed. Good pitch that time by Asher for the first out of the night. He's already tied strikeouts with He's already tied strikeouts with Ishag on the night, but first out of the night for Caden Asher is a strikeout. Now at the plate for Hartford is Kolb. Takes first pitch inside for a strike, 0-1. Uh-oh. <laughs> so 0-1 is the count to Kolb. As he takes the ball downstairs, 1-1 is the count with one out. Caden Asher, righty and righty matchup now as Ishag was the lefty on the mound. As this one's hit, foul out of play again. Out to Waukesha. If a home run gets hit, we'll see what city I choose <laughs> where it's hit to. But this game stays 1-0 here, here in the fifth inning, top of the fifth. I got to give it here. It's a really big pitching duel here to start this one. Oh, man. So it's a 1-2 count right now to Cole, but he strikes out swinging and two strikeouts here right now. Right off the bat. Coming out of the bullpen. Caden Nasher. Making a dangerous sidearm side thrower. Two quick strikeouts. And now coming to the plate for the Hartford Orioles is back at the top of the order is RJ Tome. As he takes a, a ball outside on the right to start it. Oh. Man, as this ball's hit to the right field, that's going to fall. Fair ball on the right field side. Kelchin making the play and a base hit knock right there for the second hit of the game for Hartford. We haven't seen a lot of hits today, and there's one right there that time for the leadoff man, Tome, with this first hit of the night. So it looked like... Caden Asher could have got out of this one. Two strikeouts to start the top of the fifth in relief. And then a base knock from Tome. As now Ethan Bla Burkill trying to come up to the plate here and try to deliver for the Hartford Orioles now. Comes the first pitch. Inside for strike one. As he tries to pick him off right there, and that one won't be in time. Not a lot of base runners here, but early on in the season, you won't see too much scoring early in games because teams got to get used to their mojo here to start the spring as the pitch is followed back at the back screen. 0-2 is the count with two outs. Looking to have a solid inning from senior Caden Asher on the mound for the Lasers in relief. Here we go. Here's the pitch to Burkell. As this one's grounded to the second baseman. Wilbur trying to make a play at first. Can't get it to go. The runner's going to go to third. The ball gets past him. And the runners are going to be on the corners now for Hartford. And I don't know. I think they're going to call that an error. As J.J. Wilbur trying to make a spectacular play right to the first baseman, Reed Burns again. Burns just couldn't. Couldn't step on the bag like he did earlier in that first inning. And now here comes a threat for Hartford to potentially tie the run. Tying run 90 feet away. As we got runners on the corners with two outs. Now going to the plate for Hartford is Carter Cuts. As a mound visit here, I think their coach is just going to talk it over with Caden Asher. But Asher, talk about the swing of this one here. Did Burkell end up stealing to second? 
Then saying, yeah. Oh, no. They intentionally walked. Cuts. Unless. Well, we got bases loaded now with two outs. After that mound visit, it just looked like what was a really big inning from Kate and Asher with two strikeouts started turning in a little bit of a dumpster fire right away as now we got the bases loaded with two outs now. What was no what was no runners on with two outs is now bases loaded with two outs. So let's see if we can get out of this jam now. The first big jam of the night for Kettle Marine to try to get out of as the first pitch is taken inside for a strike. Can Hartford deliver right now? Or can Kettle Marines keep this game 0-1? As that ball's taken downstairs for ball one. Yeah, you gotta be careful in this situation too. When you're at when you're getting that count high with balls. You gotta be a little careful of maybe trying to throw a strike here and trying to see what he can get. Maybe try to get a pop out or something, ground out to get out of this jam. One one. Taken outside for ball two. Two one the count with two outs. Base is loaded. Hartford looking to deliver for their first run of the game. Two one outside again, and now it's going to be three one. One more ball could walk a run in and tie this game up. Caden Asher falling a little behind right here with 17 pitches, and the catcher Koloff is going to go to the mound. Asher is going to go to the mound and talk to his pitcher again and talk, talk, tell him to cool off a little bit here because one more ball could tie this game up. All of a sudden, it looks like Aiden, Caden Nasher has lost his command a little bit. How about that? Well, that pitcher and catcher are brother duos right now. Caden Nasher on the mound, Lincoln Nasher behind the dish. Swing and a miss! Did he, did he foul it? Or is it full count now? Foul tip in the glove. So they will do this again for a full count. That was a big swing right there. You know, this is the part of the game where Caden Asher either has a chance to get him swinging from something in the dirt or something in the air as this one follows up again. And we will keep doing the three full count, full count again. With two outs here in the top of the fifth, one nothing Kettle Moraine. Hartford looking to do some big damage right now. Joe Landgraf trying to tie this game up either with a base hit or a walk right now. Let's see what Caden Asher gives him on the full count with two outs. This one's grounded to the second base side. Over to the first. Reed has time. Got it. And Kettle Moraine gets out of the jam and the bench is hype. It, the game stays 1-0 as we head into the middle of the fifth, bottom of the fifth inning. You're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin as a matter of fact. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Fetacaseri, Keflatiri, Kefla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey as well as making Edom, Gouda and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Big Putts is the greatest indoor mini golf experience in the universe, as determined by unofficial independent voting. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield is open seven days a week. Plan your next night out, weekend, birthday party, company outing, or an afternoon delight of mini golf at Big Putts. After a round of golf, test your skill in the area's best arcade. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield and Big Putts on Facebook. I like Big Putts and I cannot lie. Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here in Oconomowoc. one nothing is a score. Kettle Moraine leads on Hartford here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Kettle Moraine, Hartford looked like they got out of a jam in the top of that fifth inning, or Kettle Moraine got out of the jam right there with Caden Asher on the mound here taking over for the starting pitcher, Andrew Ishag. He got off to a hot start with two strikeouts and then ended up loading the bases and ending up finishing the job with a ground out here like it's been all day. Kettle Moraine's field work in the infield is safe to say has been really spectacular here, and that's why this game stays 1-0 here in the bottom of the fifth. 
So coming up to the plate here for the Kettle Marine Lasers. I think it looks like they got someone new on the mount and the plate now. Kelchin will take the plate now. Brandon Kelchin. Emmett Kelchin. Number 23 up at the bat here. 0 for 1 on the day. As pitching now for the Hartford Orioles is Pohl. Brandon Pohl takes the mound now after he started off the game at catcher. How about that? <laughs> Pohl starts off at catcher. He now moves to pitcher. And Carter cuts. Er, Carter cuts moves the catcher now. That's, what's, that's what I love about Game Changers. You can still see who's in the field, too. So, so here we go. Bottom of the fifth inning here. one nothing is a score. Hartford now starting to get in their relief pitching, trying to keep this game where it is with Emmett Kelchin coming to the plate. As Brandon Pohl gets ready on the mound for his first pitching appearance of the season. Only allowed three hits on the day so far. Hartford has with Braden Berg on the mound. As Berg is done for the night. What 0-1 is a count. The 0-1 to Kelchin. As he steps off the mound right here. As Emmett Kelchin calls time. Starting to get a little more, bit more chilly now. So the night keeps going on. This ball's hit to the right side of the second baseman. Helm's going to hand it over to Burkell for out number one. So. Sam Scafido comes to the plate now for Kettle Moraine. The ninth hitter. It was 0 for 1 tonight. Like I said, both hit, both teams combined only with five hits tonight. Cal Marion with three, Hartford with two. Not so, so big of a hitting night, but it is opening day for Hartford and the first game in Wisconsin in the season for Kettle Moraine. As the first pitch is taken outside for ball one with one out. Scafido takes a step off the mound right here and Cuts, looking to talk to him now here, see what they, just catching up a little bit here real quick, taking a break and saying fist bumps. Hey, hey you want to go after the game? Here, you want to go to Culver's after the game? He's probably saying, huh? <laughs> Maybe if they win, we, you know, you never know. Opening night, Friday night, Friday night lights we're in right now, huh? We get that in, a, in 20 more weeks, we get Friday night lights on Zaleski Sports. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen in Milwaukee, we'll have our, First coverage of football on Zaleski Sports here in Milwaukee. Starting in late August. As he looks to sign for the bunt. It's going to be a 1-1 count with one out. This is also my first game ever doing baseball as well. So, you know, I studied all the film. I studied Brian Anderson. I studied Bob Uecker even. All those guys, you name it. Oh, who knows? He's just some random guy, right? <laughs> Bob Uecker, man, he's a legend. Still broadcasting at 90 years old. That's incredible. The call he had for Jackson Churio's first home run on the Brewers was spectacular. It's a 2-2 count now with one out here in the bottom of the fifth. That ball is taken high. Oh, wow. Speaking of Brewers, Christian Yelich hits a solo home run to put the Brewers back up in front. How about that? Christian Yelich, one of my favorite baseball players. <laughs> so this game, one nothing here. Bottom of the fifth, one out. According to Adam McKelvey, that one was no doubter. 431 feet for Christian Yelich. So 
So we're going to do the full count now here. This one's hit to the right side. Trying to make the play. Dives and can't get it through here as Langraf trying to make that one go through. And it's a base knock for Sam Scafido for the fourth hit of the night. J.J. Wolbert comes back up as we head back to the top of the order. As he's got Migos' song for his walk-up. You know, a lot of teams do walk-up songs, and I like that for these guys. I mean, you got to let the guys have fun, right? <laughs> and that's just, they've been doing just that here for most of these teams so far. So the first pitch is up high for a ball. For J.J. Wolbert, as Paul with nine pitches in his first outing of the year with a ground out and a walk so far, or base hit. It's 2 0 nothing on the count now. Kenham Ren looking to break this game right open right now. A big hit could break it open. Here we go with Wolbert. Swing and a miss. Big hack right there from Wolbert. He got a big sign right there from the third base coach. 2-1 is the count now. Looked like he really wanted that one to hit a gap right there possibly and try to extend this lead and get the guy from first with speed, the speedy Scafido at first. This one's hit high and deep to center. And he's just going to miss this one a little bit and it's going to be caught by the center fielder, Thomas, for out number two. Man, I tell you what, sometimes when the ball just goes up in the air, I think it's a deep shot already, but a lot of these balls get high, hit high up in the air. And now coming back up to the plate is Jimmy Angle, number 44, in the left fielder. Pole, Brandon Pohl, pretty good outing so far here. 12 pitches. No strikeouts yet, but he's doing a good job so far here other than that base hit with two outs. Strike one to start this one here on Angle. Angle one for two on the night. He's got a base hit. That's one of the crucial runners on bases. The pickoff attempt is not in time. No balls and one strike to Angle. As this one's taken outside for ball one. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up here in Milwaukee and Zalesi Sports next week, we got St. Thomas Moore versus Shoreland Lutheran next Thursday night at the Franklin Field, the Milkman Stadium. And next Saturday, we got Burlington. Kimberly at Burlington as the pickoff attempt is not in time right there. Kimberly in Burlington next Saturday at what time? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. and on Thursday, 7 p.m.? 7.30 p.m. next Thursday, first pitch. 11 a.m. first pitch next Saturday. Matt Peck will have you on the call next Thursday. I'll have the call next Saturday. As this one's fouled, come up. <laughs> that ball's fouled right to the seats in the Hartford side. As it's one, a 1-2 one count now with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Angle looking to do some damage for this Ketamaran Lasers team. One, two. That one's hit foul again right outside to Milwaukee. Uh, Wales. Wales, I guess, yeah. Maybe if there was a home run, I could say Milwaukee. <laughs> that might have to be my signature call when we have home runs. <laughs> Wherever's the closest city or... <laughs> You know, one of our sponsors, Fleet Farm, not too far from where we are right now here in Oconomowoc, right down the, right down the street. Maybe that foul ball got hit to Fleet Farm. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of Fleet Farm, well, after this pitch, I'll one-two count. Taking outside for ball two. Tonight's game is sponsored by Fleet Farm. Pick up all your pet's favorites from Fleet Farm. Find everything from food and treats to toys and health products under one roof from all the brands you trust. 
Dogs or cats, they've got you covered. Shop your pets everyday essentials at Fleet Farm. 2-2 again, fouled off, and it's a Fleet Farm once again. <laughs> you got to think when these foul balls get hit out, they got some guy to retrieve it though, right? I mean, so many foul balls get hit out, but when you're in the MLB, you have like millions of balls, so you can you never run out of the MLB, it seems like, huh? So we're going to do the 2-2 two -two with two outs again as a pickoff attempt tries again. Pole can't get him. Pole looking to get out of a small jam right here after giving up that base hit to Scafido. As Angle looking to do damage. 2-2 two -two again. Grounded to the third base. Landgraf going to go to first to Burkell and Enta retires aside as the game stays 1-0 through 5. We got two more innings left to go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. Asher Lasting Exteriors is committed to craftsmanship, innovation, and outstanding customer service as Western Wisconsin's trusted gutter and gutter helmet experts. Our highly trained certified technicians can install gutter helmet onto new or existing gutters. Gutter helmet blends in beautifully with your home, can withstand the heaviest of rainfalls, and is backed by a lifetime transferable warranty. Save up to 20% with zero down and no interest or payments for up to 18 months with seamless gutters and gutter helmet. Brought to you by Asher Lasting Exteriors. Fleet Farm has everything you need for every season of life. From tending the vegetable garden season to planting 100 acres of crop season. Fleet Farm is your one-stop shop. Whether it's strawberry jam season, cook your walleye season, or his first set of wheels season. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Welcome back to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park. 1-0 is the score here from Wisconsin Brewing Co Company Park here in Oconomowoc. Kettle Moraine leads on Hartford as we head into the sixth, sixth inning here. Top of the sixth. one nothing is the score here in the top of the sixth. Kettle Moraine leads on Hartford. Hartford has had some of their chances in two out of the five innings so far here. Let's see. They got two more chances left here to go. Six more outs left to go for Kettle Moraine. But this one's going to go down the wire as we've got a one-run game. Anything is possible. As the first pitch is taken up high for ball one. At the plate is Brandon Pohl for Hartford. As that ball's taken in for strike one. One-one is the count. Remaining on the mound is Caden Asher, who had a pretty good inning to start last one with two strikeouts to start and then a couple base runners to go by and then finally got out of the jam with another grounder as this one goes for strike two. This game a lot different from our Merrill Pewaukee game here. A lot, still a lot less scoring. But you got to remember the team that couldn't score at Merrill, they caught up in that second Last inning as this one's grounded right to the pitcher. And it hands it over to Burns for out number one. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, uh, I don't know why it's kind of started on that one, but out number out number one here in the top of the sixth. As now number three coming up to bat for Hartford is Caden Romans. 0 for 2 on the day. He takes a ball inside for strike one. All one is the count to Romans. Ball's taken inside again for strike two. Caden Romans doesn't like what he's got in the first two pitches, and he's down behind, way behind 0 and 2 right now. And Caden Asher looking for strikeout number three right, now, right here. Here goes a pitch. This one's grounded to the third base side. Fabishak over to first for out number two. Fabishak making some pretty good plays at first base, third base to. Hand over to the first baseman, Reed Burns, and now we're 
Two up and two down already here with Ford coming to the plate now for Hartford. I believe this is a pinch hitter. Nope. He's a designated hitter. So he's over two on the day here. Ford. Connor Ford is 0 for 2 today with two grounders as this one's. Did it hit him? Yep, it hit him. As a runner is going to be on now, and here we go again. You better hope that Caden Asher doesn't get into some trouble again here with two outs. Last inning, we saw Caden Asher get two strikeouts, and then he got a couple big hits. Let's see if he can get out of this jam now here as Brady Lawson comes to the plate. First pitch in for a strike. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned to our post-game show as I will head down to the field and interview the winning coach and our Zaleski Sports Highlight House player of the game. That one's taken high and upstairs for ball one. Lost in 0-2 on the day. Just takes another ball inside for strike two. And he's one strike away from getting out of this one. And would possibly be four outs away now. Three outs if he could get this out right here from winning this game. Here we go. 1-2. Hit foul. Just got a tip on it here. And we'll do it with a 1-2 again. 33 pitches on the night for Caden Asher. It's safe to say that Andrew Ishag and Caden and Asher have done a really great job on the mound tonight, keeping the score thing scoreless so far. Hartford trying to knock on the door, though, here. A big hit, double, triple could tie this game. This one's hit, grounded to the second baseman. Scafito over to... F Got him out right there, and it Kenham Rain gets out of the inning. 1-0 to zero states the score as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. For the best price on the Bowtie brand, all roads lead to Griffin Chevrolet in the Auto Mall. Lease this 24 Chevrolet Trex for $255 a month or 36 months. Or when you lease this 24 Chevrolet Silverado, pay just $348 for 36 months. Find new roads, discover old friends. There's no better way than with a Griffin Chevrolet. Welcome back to Boys Baseball on Zaleski Sports. Elijah Vanks a lot with you. Matt Prack producing. one nothing is a score. Kettle Moraine leads on Hartford. As going to the plate right now is the designated hitter, Scott Brown, who delivered the one and only run off of a line drive double to right center in the second, first inning. Oh, I think it's safe to say this game Definitely going to be a little longer than that first game we had, but this one could be over soon, possibly, if Kettle Marine can finish the job. Probably looking to put some insurance runs on the board right now to make it easy in the ninth, in the seventh inning. <laughs> so 0-1 is the count to start the first one here, as on the mound for Hartford, I believe, is still pull. As this one's grounded to the right side, is that one going to stay fair? It does. And all he has to do is tag him out. The first baseman, Burkell, gets right to him for out number one. So Brandon Pohl stays on the mound for his second inning of relief to keep this game where it is and try to get his Hartford guys to only need one run to catch up. <laughs> one out down here in the bottom of the sixth. At the plate now is is it 
Is it Brown? Yeah. So before Brown, it was Burns. Reed Burns that was at the plate to hit. Now it's Brown at the plate now for Kettle Moraine. The guy who actually drove in the run as he's one for two on the night here. So Scott Brown, a senior. I'm going to do some more damage for this team. Big hack right there as it's two and two now. And it's two and one. Two balls and one strike on Scott Brown. Paul doing a pretty good job on relief right now. 2-1. Inside. Catches the right corner for strike two. Here we go. The 2-2. Two -two. Inside for strike three. As the umpire runs around to show that run right there and brought... And Burns, Burns with his first K of the night. Going to go along with the six team strikeouts here, that five that Berg, Berg had earlier in the game. Now this game has been a game of defense to say the least. As this one's hit high in, in the shallow left field and it's going to be caught. And three up and three down go the... Kettle Marine Lasers as it's time to stretch here as we go into the final inning, the seventh inning. one nothing. Kettle Marine leads Hartford. Three more outs, last chance. You're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. As a proud sponsor of Zaleski Sports, Stevens Point Brewery brings you a variety of gourmet sodas to indulge in while watching your favorite teams. Flavors include black cherry cream, kitty cocktail, mango, orange cream, vanilla cream, and root beer in regular or zero sugar. Have it as a float for the perfect post-game treat. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wisconsin Brewing Company Park. one nothing's a score here. Kettle Moran leads on Hartford. Boys baseball here on Zaleski Sports. Elijah Vangsalata with you here alongside Matt Peck producing. We've got a really great one tonight here, great defensive one here as Hartford's only got two hits. Kettle Moran only with three on the night thanks to that double from Scott Brown to put him in the lead. But it's one nothing now. Kettle Moran leads. And... The last chance for the Hartford Orioles. Yeah. Matt Peck, turn the lights on, man. Come on. Keep those lights off. <laughs> yeah. We have a mirror. We have a mirror that the camera's showing in. And coming in to try to close the game out here is still Caden Nasher, who's pitched three straight innings. How about the job him and Andrew Ishak have done on the mound today? for this Kettle Marine Lasers team. A 1-0, this one's fouled outside of the stadium right to someone's car in the parking lot. Hopefully it's not yours, Matt Peck. <laughs> I said hopefully it's not yours. <laughs> so 1-1 is the count with no outs here in the top of the seventh. Oh! Oh my goodness, that one hit him in the head, but he took it like a champ. Kolb, ouch. I'm, they probably should check up on him to make sure he's all right, but that one drilled him right in the head. All right. First base coach and head coach, every, all the trainers looking to come right at him now make sure he's all right. But he, he looks like he's fine, but one thing you got to check right now is if he's – maybe he, he, you got to make sure he doesn't have a concussion <laughs> because – you get, him getting drilled in the head with a fastball could could knock you out in a way. <laughs> but he, he he ran to first base like he wants to stay in this game. But not a good start to this top of the seventh here for Caden Asher. And speaking of the final inning right now, ladies and gentlemen, stay, stay tuned to our Zaleski Sports post game here, Nasonville Dairy post game show, as I will go down to the field and interview 
and winning coach in our Zaleski Sports Highlight House Player of the Game. As it looks like Kolb is going to stay in the game here after they check up on him. And now they're going to have a guy in first year, no outs in the top of the seventh. With Tomei coming to the plate. RJ Tomei, one for three on the night here tonight. Let's see if he can get another big hit for the Hartford Orioles right now. Here comes a pitch, big swing and a miss. 0-1 is the count, no outs with guy on first base. Let's see if head coach Steve Oleshko sends Culp to second here to potentially steal. Here comes a 1-1, this one's fouled. Outside the stadium again. And it'll be 0-2 now on RJ Tomei, the leadoff hitter. Kettle Moraine, their pitching staff has just been fantastic all day, especially their defense as well. Here we go. This one's pitched outside. And the runner does not go as it's going to be one and two now with no outs. Guy at first base still. Kettle Moran looking to get their first shutout of the season, or second shutout of the season as they had one in Tennessee. This one hit deep to right field. That one's going to fall fair. Runner goes to third. Are they going to send him home? The right fielder throws it in. They're going to hold him at third, and it's a huge double from R.J. Tomey. Hartford back in business here with no outs. And... Wow. wow. Hartford just like that with the snap of the fingers right back in this game. Big hit right there from RJ Tomey. Sends Aiden Kolb the third. And we've got guys on second and third with no outs now. Ideally a sack fly ties this game up now. A base hit could even give Hartford the lead right now. So the guy to potentially do that right now is Ethan Burkell. Man, Kane and Asher, he's had a pretty good night, but this past inning has been too hot for him. First pitch, grounded. They're going to go to first instead, and they're going to concede. This game is tied, ladies and gentlemen. A grounder to first, and Burkell delivers with the ground out right there, but forgets a one out first out of the inning. Smart choice by the second baseman, Scafido, to go to first and get an out. And they intentionally walk. Burkell. Or Joe Landgraf gets, Carter Cutts gets intentionally walked, and they send up to the plate Joe Landgraf now with guys on first and third. Another sack fly could give Hartford the lead now. After Kettle Moraine has led all game, Hartford knocking on the door, to, trying to take the lead and put Kettle Moraine now in a tough spot. 1-1 one, one is a score with one out. This one's ground to the th third. It goes past him. Ken Hartford takes the lead. A guy goes to third. And we got runners on the corner. The Hartford Orioles, ladies and gentlemen, have taken the lead off of a, it looked like that was a line drive shot to J.J. Wolbert. who goes right past him and threw him. I think that might be an error. As just good job putting it in play for Carter Cuts. And now the Hartford Orioles, trailing all game, have now taken the lead in the late stages in the final inning. As they're going to have a mound visit now in the middle. They're going to talk them through here. Still no one warming up here in the bullpen. Looks like they're going to stay with Caden Asher on the mound. But how about the job for the Hartford Orioles to fight back in this one and take the lead in the last inning. Looks like Kettle Moraine's going to send a guy to the bullpen now. Start to get warmed up. As they now trail 2-1 to one to Hartford. With Brandon Pohl coming to the plate, who's 0 for 2 on the night, with runners on the corners. One out in the inning. How about this? Some runs have only been scored in the first and last inning of the game. It's not how you start, though. It's how you finish, right? That's just how it goes. As the first pitch is taken... Inside for a strike on Brandon Pohl, the catcher, the pitcher right now. 
as he tries to pick him off at first. Doesn't get him. Hartford's got to really try to break this game open here and really make Kenham Rain work for the runs here to try to tie it or take the win right here. As this one's grounded to first, they're only going to be able to get one out of this. They're going to go to home plate. He can't recover. The catcher doesn't get it. A run scores. A runner goes a third. And Hartford just keeps adding on to this, their runs. Three to one lead now. Insurance runs for Hartford. That one was just chopped bouncer. That was a tough play. Asher tried to go to home plate. I don't think. Okay, I don't think Braden was Lincoln was ready for that one. So a two-run lead now for Hartford. So Hartford leads three to one now here in the top of the seventh. After Kettle Moran has led all game one nothing, Hartford is pretty much breaking this game open. This game's still no doubt close. It's going to be a save opportunity in the bottom of the seventh, but Hartford trailed, and now they take a two-run lead. Ball taken upstairs, ball one for number three, Caden Romans, who's 0 for 3 on the night. Runner steals the second base, Brandon Pohl, and now they can't turn the double play. That's an important out right there that they could have had, and that's an important stolen base. So now we got runners on second and third, a base hit, Makes this game four to five to one. This one followed back. Like Caden Romans really wanted that one right there. Here we go. Two one count. This one's hit high and deep to right left field. The runner's gonna tag. He gets the out. Throw to the plate. That's going to be not in time, and it's going to be 4-1. and one. Hartford leads, and Landgraf scores. Wow. Just like that, Hartford up 4-1 with the snap of the fingers. And it's going to take a really huge effort now if Kettle Marine wants to come back in this game, a really big bottom of the seventh inning if they want to pull out with this one. How about this home opener for Hartford? And then you talk about the job the pitching staff has done to keep these guys in the game. Whether it was either Braden Berg, who only kept this game one run with five strikeouts, and how about Brandon Pohl doing it on both ends? Swing and a miss, foul tip. It's going to be 0-2 count now with two outs. Ken Rain cannot let Ken Rain cannot let Hartford do any more damage the rest of this game. Otherwise, this one. Could get done in a hurry. 0-2 oh, count to Ford as he takes a ball outside. One ball, two strikes with two outs here in the top of the seventh. This one grounded to the second baseman. Tough play. Over to first, he's going to be able to make it. But how about the Hartford Orioles? Four runs in the top of the seventh inning. Trailed all game to come back, take the lead, and are three outs away from stealing this one from Kenner Moran. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching baseball on Zaleski Sports. Why work for Staub Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good. and They, I believe, truly care about their employees. Staub has a a great benefits package. Staub is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Staub Construction. Apply now at StaubCO.com. Big Putts is the greatest indoor mini golf experience in the universe, as determined by unofficial independent voting. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield is open seven days a week. Plan your next night out, weekend, birthday party, company outing, or an afternoon delight of mini golf at Big Putts. After a round of golf, test your skill in the area's best arcade. Big Putts on South 27th Street in Greenfield and Big Putts on Facebook. I like Big Putts and I cannot lie. Welcome back to Lake 
uh, Wisconsin Brewing Company Park here in Oconomowoc, home of the Lake Country Dockhounds. 4-1, to one, Hartford has taken the lead over Kettle Moraine here. Late stages here, WIA Baseball on Zaleski Sports. Elijah Banks, a lot of with you here for the final stretch of the game here. As the ball gets thrown a second here. It's now Brandon Pohl. We'll try to finish this game off here after what was a 1-0 lead for Kettle Moraine has faded. And now Kettle Moraine's going to have to do some damage now here in the bottom of the seventh that they want to come back. But the number two team, break by PBR, is in trouble right now here in their first game of the, their home opener in the season. Here we go. First pitch. Outside for ball one. The way this game has gone, Kendall Moraine, it would just be fitting if they could come back in this one. As this one's taken inside for a strike, one ball, one strike. But I got to give credit to where it's due for the pitchers on Hartford, whether it's Brandon Pohl or Braden Berg. Both pitchers have been dangerous on the day. Ball taken up and high upstairs. Two one is the count. Ball taken inside for strike two on Lincoln Asher, the senior. Here we go. Two two. Swing and a miss. Out number one. Brandon Pohl strikes him out. Two more outs away from pulling out their first one of the season. They would have a thousand winning percentage if they win. <laughs> it's early on. A team that went to state last year, trying to make a statement on a top five team in the state as of right now. First pitch fouled and way outside the stadium for an 0-1 count on Roll off. Or, yeah, we'll roll, roll off. Here we go. Pitch is high and upstairs. Ball one. One one count one out, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned to our Lucky Sports post game show as I will be going down to interview the winning coach and highlight house player of the game. Ball high upstairs for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Now with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Brandon Pohl trying to finish a comeback job right here. High upstairs again. Back to back straight balls right now. Catcher cuts trying to tell him, let's slow it down a little bit. Here goes a 3-1 count to roll off the pitch. High upstairs again, three straight balls. And Kettle Moraine has a big eye on first base with one out. Now Emmett Kelchin will come to the plate now as it looks like Coach, Coach Oleshko will come to the mound for Hartford to pull Brandon pull out of this game. Or Willie. Looks like he's just going to keep him on the mound right now. Just talking to them, saying some scenarios here to try to finish this game off here and hold on. After that four pitch walk. But out of the plate is Emmett Kelchin, who's 0 for 2 on the night here. Kelchin also has. Striking out once today. Here we go. Kenham Ray needs to keep getting base runners on and try to extend this game as long as they can. Brandon Pohl try to finish it here. 38 pitches on his pitch count. That ball is taken high and upstairs for ball one. Here goes the second pitch. Downstairs. And all of a sudden, Brandon Pohl starting to look like he's losing his command a little bit here. 2-0 count. 
May get five straight balls thrown for Kel for pole. Here we go. This one taken high and upstairs. Ball three. And a little bit of trouble right now for Brandon Pohl. Now six straight balls. 3-0 count. I can imagine Kelchin doesn't get the signal to hit right here. This pitch could go right down the middle. We'll see. It does go right down the middle indeed, and he finally gets back to his command and gets the first strike of the at-back. 3-1 count now with one out. Guy on first base for Kettle Moraine. Let's see what Pohl has to deliver right here. 3-1. High and upstairs. A guy walks. Guy's on first and second now. The tying run coming to the plate for Kettle Moraine with one out in the bottom of the seventh. Now coming to the plate for Kettle Moraine is Sam Scafito, who's one for two on the night here. He delivered a base hit his last time up. Does he have another one in him right now to send another run in? Can he get a big hit? Double, triple, even a home run to tie the game. Strike one on the inside to start it on the right corner. Pohl starting to work up his pitch count now, up to 43 pitches on the night now. 0-1 count. Foul this one of the right back screen. Scafido falling behind now, down 0-2 on the count. We got one ball, two strikes to Sam Scafido. One, two. Struck him out. Two outs now gone by here, and Hartford one out away from sealing the deal in a big comeback win in the season opener. Now coming to the plate now is third baseman, shortstop, J.J. Wolbert here. 0 for 3 on the day here trying to save his team. And the tying run still at the plate with two outs. Brandon Pohl trying to get out of the jam. First pitch. Out the center field. S base hit, and it's going to send the runner home to the plate. The throw is going to go be cut off, and Kettle Moran scores a run. And this one's not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. 4-2 to two is the score now. Nobody, nobody on the nobody in the bullpen getting loose for Hartford. So this is going to be Brandon Pohl's inning. But the tying run is on base. The winning run to the plate for Kettle Moraine. As Angle comes to the plate now, with guys on first and second with two outs. That first pitch is taken high for strike one. Four to two is a score. Hartford. Makes a big comeback statement here to try to finish this one off. Just one more out remaining. This one taken inside for strike one. Hard, hard working day for both pitchers here on Hartford here. Keeping the score where it is, a low score if you will. As this one's hit high and deep to center. This could do it to the center fielder. Thomas catches it. Hartford wins the season opener. Four to two is the final here, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned as the Hartford Orioles win the season opener. I will go down to the field and interview Coach Steve O'Shell. Oh, oh, <laughs> all right, I'll be going down to the field. Steve Olecho, I think his name is. Hold on one sec. This one's driving me nuts right now. But a big win for Hartford to go 1-0 on the season. Kettle Moraine falls a 2-2 two two in their first game of the season at home. Steve Olechko is victorious here in their first game of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned as I will go down to the field now and interview Ales Coach Oleshko and our Zaleski Sports Highlight House player of the game after these messages. Customize your next apparel order with Meta Custom Apparel of Stevens Point. Visit us today for custom baseball and softball apparel. Need help with a design? We have you covered. Our highly skilled staff will turn your idea into a reality with great quality screen printing. Or choose from a variety of embroidery options today. Visit us at our physical store or online at madeacustom.com. 
You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older. I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys. Me! <laughs> hey, Mike, I'm Sheila from Security, and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood, and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? Fleet Farm has everything you need for every season of life. From tending the vegetable garden season to planting 100 acres of crop season. Fleet Farm is your one-stop shop. Whether it's strawberry jam season, cook your walleye season, or his first set of wheels season. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin as a matter of fact. Nasonville Dairy actually goes back to 1885. We are the oldest plant in Wood County. When our father brought us here in the early 1960s, we ran 7,500 pounds of milk a day. We now run 1.5. Test, test, test. Uh, we're a company uh, based up north from uh, uh, Stevens Point. Okay. But uh, me, and, me and my broadcast partner, we're from here actually. So they decided to expand down here to Milwaukee. Beautiful. And, uh, are we good? Welcome back to the Zaleski Sports Post Game Show. We're joined right now by Coach Steve Oleshko on Hartford. Coach, very hard, hard-earned win from your guys tonight. You know, what would you like to see from you guys in this big comeback, hard-fought first game of the season? Well, you know, this is our first. Our, this is like our second time out this season. So <clears throat> I thought we played a really good baseball game, um, and it just showed you the character of this ball club. You know, down one to nothing in the last inning, we put up a, a crooked number. So I'm real proud about that. And lastly, just how about your pitching staff today? Brandon Pohl, Braden Berg, you know, they, they, you guys were down one to nothing pretty much the whole game until the last inning. Talk about the job they did to just keep their command and getting through this game, even though it was a close game. Yeah, well, you know, those two boys are, are really talented pitchers, and uh, they beat a, a pretty good ball club over um, with Kettle Moraine. Yeah, that was a really good game tonight. Thank you for your time, Coach. Thank we hope to see much. you guys soon. All right, we're joined right now by our highlight house player of the game, Carter Cutts, the catcher of the Hartford Orioles. Carter, you know, what'd you, you guys had a really big comeback tonight here. How, how, what were your thoughts on this thriller? 
I mean, we know, we don't quit. That's the thing about this ball club. We're grinders. I mean, we're obviously underrated. Uh, I think we put ourselves on the map tonight, and it's just a start to our season. This is the first one. You know, talk about a little bit about your, these guys this year. I mean, your, your pitching staff. They, I, I said to Coach Braden, I mean, not Br yeah, Braden, right? Brandon Pohl. And uh, Brandon Braden, yeah, Brandon Braden. Uh, just talk about the job they did on the mound tonight. Yeah, they were incredible. I mean, Brayson threw about 60 something. He was just getting warmed up. That's that's not the best you'll see him this year. He's uh, he's a dog. I mean, Br Brandon Pohl is obviously a dog too. He comes in incredibly clutch in our seasons. And last season too, we have a lot of returning starters, a lot of returning starting pitching, and we're gonna be dangerous this year. All right, so for our Highlight House play of the game, I'm going to give you the mic now. I'm going to have you look up at that camera, too, and, uh, and then I'm going to count you down from 3, 2, 1, and you're going to say your name, and you're in the house. Yes, sir. Got that? Yes, sir. All right, 3, 2, 1. Carter cuts, and we're in the house, baby. Yes, sir. Congrats on the big first yes, win. Sir. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys for joining us today here live on Zaleski Sports. Hartford defeats Kettle Moraine 4-2 in the final here from, Kettle, from Lake Country .com Stadium here. Elijah Vanks a lot of signing off here from the Lake Country .com Stadium here. Big win. We'll be back next Thursday with St. Thomas More versus Shoreland Lutheran and next Saturday with Kimberly at Burlington. Big thriller comeback win. Congrats to Hartford tonight on the big win. Signing off, Elijah Vanks a lot of.